LAPD officer pleading not guilty for allegedly forcing a teenager to strip. Tyler Cerisis is facing a number of charges and WDSU's Anam Siddiqui was inside that courtroom during today's hearing and has more details. Tyler Saroy sat in the courtroom with support by his side. He pleads not guilty to all three charges against him. Any comment regarding today's hearing? The woman who sat next to Sir Royce in court had nothing to say to our cameras. She was later seen driving away with the suspended officer. Sir Royce accused of forcing a 17 year old to strip out of his clothes. Court records allege he contacted the teen multiple times on a private cell phone number and showed up at his house. Sir Royce allegedly ordered the teen to strip to his underwear, pulled his waistband open and looked at him. Court documents allege the officer was in uniform at the time and wearing a body camera when this happened. He's currently out on bond and issued an ankle monitor. Sir Royce is ordered back in court in October. For now, reporting at Orleans Parish Criminal Court, Anam Siddiqui, WDSU News. At 530, a police officer finding himself on the other side of the law, sentenced to time in federal prison after pleading guilty to selling drugs. Well, KCAL News Assignment Editor Mike Rogers at the desk. Mike, you told us when this officer was charged. How long right. will he spend behind bars? So after he reached a plea agreement with the federal prosecutors, he will spend two and a half years in federal prison on allegations that he was selling drugs while on the job. I actually want to come to my computer here because I'm going to show you the federal document uh, where they talk about it. They said specifically their uh, CW, which was a confidential informant to the FBI, said that in 2020 the defendant said he had available for sale a kilo of cocaine that he was willing to sell to this guy. They also said he had two kilos of white China heroin and an unlimited supply of black tar heroin. Now, apparently this officer told this informant that he and his team stole the drugs during a routine traffic stop and that the defendant made as, uh, as a drug task force officer with the Inglewood Police Department. Now, we told you that they did reach a plea agreement and today uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office saying that this former officer, now former officer obviously, will serve two and a half years behind bars uh, in this federal sentence, guys. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Bad Apple Report. It's 7.30 a.m. bright and early right here at Home on the Range. Thank you so much for being here today, folks. You know, I really appreciate it. All right, we're going to start our day out, well, with this Cranston cop who went to a Kenny Chesney concert. As soon as uh, she thinks my tractor sexy came on, he peed all over the place. Yay, Kenny! All right. He peed on this lady's boots and uh, really messed him up pretty bad. She's mad. Okay, a Cranston police officer was arrested by a Foxborough police on Saturday night after allegedly urinating on a woman at a concert. Shane Lynch, who was off duty at the time, oh, reportedly urinated on the woman's shoe while in the pit at Gillette Stadium. Oh, he had special tickets. You know what I mean? He was using his cop. Oh, I'm not going to say that. I don't want to get in trouble. When event security arrived, police said Lynch began urinating again leading to his arrest oh, and removal from the venue. Oh, no, he didn't get to hear blank. Okay. The police report said Lynch appeared extremely intoxicated. The victim told detectives she recently purchased her boots for the concert, and they were now ruined. Oh, Lynch is facing charges of disorderly conduct and wanton destruction of property, according to the report. Well, all right, that's pretty funny. Okay, on with the show. over the weekend, but the judge dismissed the charges. Lynch paid $100 in court costs. Cranston police have told us Lynch was off duty and they're gathering information for an administrative investigation. Back all new tonight, we told you about three Illyria police officers storming into a man's home and arresting him without a warrant. Two of those officers now facing serious discipline, including termination. Well, now 19 investigates has learned that before we got involved, the chief had already cleared those officers. 19 investigator Mike Mason broke the story. He has the latest tonight. This form shows how the chief cleared those officers after tasing that man more than a year ago. So the question now is, why did the chief wait until our reports to investigate his officers' actions? 
only to find that they did violate a number of rules and regulations. It's been over a year since three Illyria police officers stormed into the home of Raul Ortiz without a warrant. They tased, arrested, and charged him with five felonies, but all those charges were later dropped. Meanwhile, Ortiz has always maintained the officers were the ones who broke the law. What I really want is justice. Those three officers are Colty Hirsch, Paige Mitchell, and Chris Lewis. 19 investigates obtained the use of force report that Mitchell filed to justify tasing Ortiz. During the scuffle, Ortiz briefly grabbed Mitchell's taser, fearing it would interfere with his pacemaker. Chief William Pelko noted that body-worn camera footage was reviewed and the officer's force was in compliance. But did the chief review the officer's actions leading up to the struggle? You watch the body cam, they should have watched it from the beginning to the end, and right then they should have known that there were violations of many, many policies. Attorney Tony Nisi represents Ortiz. He says officers had no right entering the home without a warrant. He contacted 19 Investigates last April, nearly a year after Ortiz was arrested. We then exposed how police handled the situation back in May of 2023 when Mitchell told Ortiz's ex-girlfriend she had the right to break into his house. You've lived here, so if you want to kick the door in and go and get your stuff, you're He's more than welcome dead, to. Uh, dead, dead bolt box. Anything, any door can be kicked in depending on how hard you work on it. That's when Ortiz's ex kicks the door open and officers follow her in. Nisi filed several motions to obtain the officer's body cam video, but the department claimed, due to technical issues, they only saved footage from Officer Mitchell. If they had lost Officer Mitchell's body cam footage, this would be a whole different story. Oh yeah, I'd be in jail for 36 some years with five massive felonies and, and be locked up, still to this day. Records show that eight days after our first report, Illyria's safety director ordered Chief Pelko to investigate the officer's actions. On August 1st, a three-month-long investigation found that two officers did, in fact, violate policies governing police conduct. They do nothing up to that point, then you get involved, you bring it to the public's attention, and then they finally start to take action. The chief cited Hirsch with four violations recommending a 20-day suspension. There's no record that Lewis violated any policies, but Pelko found that veteran officer Paige Mitchell violated 10 of the department's policies, including conformance to laws, arrest, search, and seizure, and truthfulness. He recommended she be terminated. Ortiz now wonders how many others have been arrested and charged with crimes they didn't commit because I told the attorneys, the attorneys did what they did, then I went to y'all. Then when I went to you guys, the whole thing's changed, and now everybody's like, oh, cops are getting fired, this is happening around. I'm like, good, that's what needs to happen. Officer Mitchell has been on paid administrative leave pending the safety director's review of the case. He said he couldn't comment due to pending litigation. Meanwhile, Ortiz has filed a federal lawsuit against the city and police department. Mike Mason, 19 News. And we're banging through the headlines like you know we got to do. And it turns out there's bad apples at the border. Border Patrol agent has been arrested for allegedly forcing women to undress during the processing. Okay, authorities in upstate New York arrested a Border Patrol agent for allegedly forcing multiple women to expose their chests during virtual processing to enter the U.S. Shane Milan, age 53, was arraigned Thursday in Syracuse on charges that he violated women's constitutional rights to be free from unreasonable searches. He faces four counts of misdemeanor, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office in North and District of New York there. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of New York said that on three separate occasions, Milan ordered women seeking admission into the U.S. to undress and expose their bare chests over webcam, while on a fourth occasion, a woman's bra remained on each time Milan allegedly lied to the women that the strip search was part of the protocol. Milan's demands to see the victim's breasts were for his own gratification, the U.S. Attorney's Office said in a statement. The Border Patrol agent committed the offenses in Jefferson County, near the Canadian border, and elsewhere, according to the charging documents. Milan's attorney and U.S. Customs and Border Protection did not immediately respond to requests for comment, but in a statement to CNN, CPB said the agency did not tolerate misconduct among its ranks. When we discovered an alleged or potential misconduct, we immediately refer to it, and we, we investigate it fully with any criminal and blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. So dude's going to have a jury trial in 
October, October 21st, according to court records. All righty. Uh, we don't have a picture of him, but you see that little logo right there? That's what those guys do. Welcome back. Take a look. You may have seen these patrol cars in different areas of Spokane County with a lot of high tech gear on top. And many of you have asked, what is it? So Crime 2's chief journalist Amanda Rowley asked the Spokane County Sheriff and here's what she found. These Spokane County patrol cars are starting to catch people's attention, mostly because of the cameras mounted on top. They're not Google Earth cars, so what do they do? Well, they're mobile camera systems that help deter crime across the county and save taxpayer dollars. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office has found a way to get more eyes on the streets, but they're not uniformed eyes. It's a retired vehicle that, that isn't being used in patrol anymore. And they're watching 24 hours a day. A mobile camera system mounted on top uses multiple eyes to keep watch of the neighborhood they're stationed in. The solar technology allows them to remain in the field for about 40 days, while the camera feeds are monitored here when needed at the county's real-time crime center. It allows us to, you know, potentially collect evidence in high crime areas. It allows us to use ALPR technology to help us solve crimes. Sheriff John Knowles is talking about automated license plate readers. It's a system that alerts law enforcement of vehicles of interest. It's like having a cop sitting on the street corner that recognizes every car that goes by but has a perfect memory of every stolen vehicle or every vehicle of interest in their brain and can automatically pick it out and identify it. In May, the ALPR system helped deputies track down a burglary suspect. Investigators identified the suspect car as a gray Porsche, and the owner was a 15-time convicted felon. The system spotted the Porsche in Liberty Lake and alerted deputies. Then they searched the area and arrested the suspect during a traffic stop. The same system helped Spokane police locate a suspect in a June drive-by shooting. It is really helping us have have a significant impact on not only violent crime cases, but also in vehicle theft cases. This parking lot is being recorded. The mobile camera system is similar to these trailers, which run about $80,000 a piece. But some resourceful staff in the sheriff's office found a way to build the same setup for only $15,000. That's got to make some taxpayer ears perk up. It is, and I'm so proud of the employees who put that together, who took the initiative and said, we think we can do this. The sheriff says it all adds up to more eyes on the street to help prevent crime. The sheriff's office currently has two of these mobile camera systems deployed across the county. They expect to have two more in the near future. Amanda Rowley. Okay, here's another big galoot that's been arrested with his Betty Crocker hair. Look, he's still got his hairdresser smock on they must have arrested him right in there <laughs> i don't know maybe that's a jail smock either way he looks goofy being a big bearded knucklehead with a 12 year old boy's haircut okay hamilton county sheriff's office animal control officer was arrested during uh arresting during an operating while intoxicated investigation well he was being investigated. Travis Dunn was arrested early Monday morning by the Westfield Police Department, according to the public information officer. Dunn was arrested with the following charges. Operating while intoxicated. Okay. Operating. Okay. The officer was placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Well, what a knucklehead. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, you guys. I just had to do one for my Canadian peeps. You know who you are. I know who you are. You guys rock. Okay, Toronto cop arrested while trying to leave the country. Mm-hmm. Okay, please say Constable Boris Borisov. What a name, Boris Borisov. Age 48, was accused of theft, fraud while trying to leave the country. That is so funny. I wonder if uh, Natasha was with him. Okay, a Toronto police officer accused of theft, fraud, and other crimes was arrested at an airport while trying to leave the country, police say. Constable Boris Borisov, <laughs> 48, was arrested by the service de police de Ville de Montreal on Saturday while trying to leave the country at Montreal's Trudeau International Airport. Oh, my goodness. They named that airport after that goofball. Toronto police said on Monday, okay, just kidding, in case there's some other Trudeau I don't know about that's like actually cool. 
You know what I mean? Okay, Borisov was due to appear in court at the Toronto Regional Bail Sentry. Monday morning, police say he now faces one charge of failing to comply with recognizance. Borisov was already facing one charge of failing to comply with with a release order for failing to appear in court in the Toronto Regional Bail Sentry in June, police say. Well, in April, Borisov was charged for allegedly taking the possessions of a missing person in 2022 police investigation. Oh. Police say the officer gave the missing person's debit card to another person who used it to make a purchase at a Misagwa store. Police further alleged the officer and the same man fraudulently obtained motor vehicles. Oh, goodness, Borisov faces 10 charges related to his conduct in that investigation, including theft and fraud. Oh, Boris. Borisov, who has served 16 years of service with the Toronto Police, has been suspended with pay. Well, naturally. Okay. Boris Borisov. Goofball. All right. On with the show. We're getting a look at body camera video showing the moments Oklahoma City police officers shot and killed a man outside his house earlier this month. Now, before you see this, we want to warn you, you may find this story disturbing. News for Spencer Humphrey is here with that video and what police claim happened that caused them to pull the trigger. Spencer? Yeah, guys, this all happened back on August 2nd when police say they got a call about a man who wanted to do suicide by cop. Again, the video you're about to see is disturbing. It was pouring rain in the early morning hours of August 2nd when Oklahoma City police officers stepped out onto the street in a neighborhood near Tinker Air Force Base. I'm a member of the crisis intervention team. I was wondering if I could talk to you guys. They're talking to a man named Brandon Lena. Police say 911 callers told them Lena had been standing in the street with a gun saying he was suicidal. Brandon, put the gun back. Put the gun down. Officers say from the moment they arrived, Lena appeared to aim right at them. Brandon, put the gun he's down. Pointing. I'll see it looks like he's pointing at you. That's when police tell us those officers fired what they call their less than lethal weapon, shooting out 40 millimeter projectiles intended to subdue but not kill him. But police say Lena kept holding his gun. Officers continued trying to get him to drop it. Could you please set it down for me again? That way I can make sure that you'll be safe and that my officers will be safe. We're just out here to help you, all these officers. I want to see you get hurt. We don't want you to get hurt. He's pointing. He's pointing it. And we don't want to see. He's trying suicide by cop for sure, dude. Oh God! He points it again. I'm gonna have to take him out. We need to talk to him while we're doing it. Brandon, that. there you go. Can you set it down? You can set it right down there in the street. A couple minutes later, police tell us they fired their less than lethal weapon one more time. Okay. That knocked Lena to the ground, but police claim Lena still immediately pointed his gun at them. That's when you hear a supervising officer say, shoot him again. Shoot again, shoot again. Within a split second, the officers fired their guns. Police say Lena was instantly killed. Now, following all this, the Oklahoma City Police Department told us they put the three officers involved on standard paid administrative leave while the department does an internal investigation. That's all we got for today, folks. You're great for being here. Thank you so much for watching the Bad Apple Report with me here this morning and every morning right here at home on the range. And as usual, I'm going to whip up another batch of Bad Apples just for you. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow morning at 730 a.m. bright and early. Have a great day, folks.